All right, welcome everyone to Friday Night Bible Study. Uh, I'm just so happy that you're all able to come. And, you know, I'm happy that uh, you chose to be with us here at KPG on the East Coast. You could have chosen anywhere else to be, but we're just glad that you are willing to fellowship with us here at KPG Ecclesia Center. And, you know, last week we had our open table discussion for those who are new and don't know about that. I implore you to get connected with us, join our text chat, and even keep up to date with us on our on our new website, which has been updated thanks to the support and work of just everybody here, and mostly our beloved uh, Apostle Simba. So let us all get into prayer, and we'll get started with today's wonderful Bible study teaching. Lord, we give you the highest praise, which is hallelujah. And, you know, a lot of people within our nation, the world, they always fight what they believe is their truth. But we know that you, Lord Christ, you, Jehovah, you, Lord Holy Spirit, you, are the truth and before we even have opinions of what we think is the truth we know yours your truth which is you for you are the way for you are all that is mighty and powerful put a squash to what us humans think is the truth and as we go into today's teaching i pray that you anoint my lips of clay let nothing let nothing of me be of earthly wisdom, but everything from you, Lord God, from Lord Holy Spirit and from the kingdom of heaven. And I pray this in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Now, before we dive into the scriptures, as you know, my assignment is to discuss with you about the armor of God, what it means to put on each piece of that armor. The piece we'll be diving into today is the belt of truth. Now, just from that, truth is something that is very important and also in our culture, controversial. We hear in our time things like your truth or my truth, where in fact the only truth there is is Jesus Christ. Amen, my brothers and sisters. The culture at large, the spirit of the age, somehow put Christians in a box. The world within America and other nations just sees the Christian people as nothing more than soup kitchen and AA providers. They even go as far as to say, we love you guys and we will praise you and all that you do just so as, just as long as you don't define who Jesus Christ is. As long as you don't tell the importance of the, rec the resurrection, we're fine with him. Just being some random guy who was a great teacher, a great prophet, you know, someone that they could compare to like Muhammad or Buddha or Gandhi. As long as you keep Jesus and your triune God in that box, we will love you and praise you and all that you do. However, the minute you people begin to define who he is, we will come after you and try to put you back into that pen in which we told you to stay in. Now, for most, many have accepted those terms. On the other hand, we know many did not accept those terms. Amen. I truly stand confidently to believe that we here at the KPG Ecclesia Center do not conform to the spirit of the age and of this world, but to that of Jesus Christ. The importance of the truth of who Jesus Christ is, is a, is a ground we Christians must not give. It's non-negotiable. And any within the church who is shaving the edges off, must be confronted. 
and many who try to pen us up into the confines of their so-called definition and truth must not be given any ground. The fight that has been going on, my brothers and sisters, since the beginning of mankind is the battle over truth. And we know who are in Christ, that he is the truth, that the spirit of the age and the world hates, but we don't care. For the Lord has, gave, has given us mercy. He has shown his providence and he has shown his holy and righteousness to those whom he for new, for those he has chosen to save. And though we take it for granted that he predestined those who he was willing to save, we must not give this ground that the Lord is the truth and that he did rise on the third day. Now here in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 19, Paul writes to the people of Corinth, for they can't get their heads wrapped around the whole resurrection. They believe everything Paul has taught them and preached to them. However, the whole rising, raising from the dead is a concept they can't seem to grasp and understand. So like most, they decide to shave the edges. However, Paul has something to say, for we know Paul is both bold when he writes and bold when he confronts in person. So let us all go to verse 1 in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And here you will find these words. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, after that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. For I am the least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me did not prove vain, but I labored even more than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God with me, whether then it was I or they. So we preach, and so you believed. Now if Christ is preached and that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain. Your faith also is vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we testified against God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise. If in fact the dead are not raised, for if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If we have hoped in Christ in this life, only we are all men most to be pitied. Now, I don't know about you, but just from verse one and two, Paul already won the argument just based on what I'm about to go into the points, just on his apostolic authority. Paul tackles the issue and basically pushes back at the very idea of Jesus Christ not being raised from the dead. And I already told you the one point he uses, which is his apostolic authority. The second one is he uses the scriptures, which is evidence 
like in any courtroom, you must bring the evidence in order to get your case won. And the second thing, uh, the third, not second, the third thing he claims is also that everything that he says and did is falsifiable. That means everything that Paul has said to, to everyone at Corn, everything he's taught to everyone at Corn, they can go to others because, like in the scripture says, there was over 500, some who are still around and some who have perished. But there are still people that he can that can go that people can go to and say, if Paul was a liar. So let us go to verse one and two because he talk, he's speaking from his apostolic authority. For here he says, "You learned the truth from me." I, I love how he doesn't add, "You learned this from me," and that this is my truth. No, for all we know. Christ is the truth, for any truth we have only comes from Christ, beloved. Also, he could say it like for the sheer fact that Paul is an apostle. He also brings up here in verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Now right here, he already won his argument, which I said in the beginning. How he won is because, like I said before, the people in the church of Corinth do not believe in the resurrection. Now, if Jesus truly did not raise from the dead, then it doesn't matter what you believe. Amen? What hope do you have, my brothers and sisters in Christ? What would be the point in preaching, proclaiming, even your faith, if he didn't rise from the, from the grave? Because, saints, our faith is only as strong on behalf of its object. So if you truly believe he didn't raise from the dead, then your belief in even what we do is in vain. Because let us go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And let's go to verse 12. Now, if Christ has preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there's no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain. Your faith is also in vain. So, beloved, here Paul says you either take up the whole gospel or none at all. There's no shaving the edges. There is no compromising the truth because the spirit of the age in the world tries with all its might to corral you into a pen because what they are after is to conceal the truth. For in Romans chapter 1, right, Paul says this. Let's go to Romans chapter 1, verses starting at verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his internal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so they are without excuse. So it is, it is the nature of man, it is the nature of the flesh to try and suppress the truth, and here Paul states, if you only believe nine out of the ten of what I taught you, it is worthless and in vain. You either take the whole gospel or you just throw it away. There is no room for being lukewarm Christians. Paul then goes into evidence, which is the scripture. Here, verses three through four. In 1 Corinthians 15, he states, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he also was buried, and that he was raised from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures, 
Here he argues with them. I have shown you through the scripture that all that has happened is real. In Romans 5, verses 12 through 14, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses, even over those who had not sinned in the likeness of the offense of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. Who was the him that Paul says was to come? Jesus Christ. For he did came, he did die, and he did rise on the third day, as the scriptures, the living word of God said he would. For if none of that happened, then that means we are forever doomed. Because even in first and uh, chapter fifteen in First Corinthians, so I'll go back right here in verse uh, fifteen. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God, because we testified against God that He raised Christ, whom He did not raise. If, in fact, the dead are not raised, for if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. You are still in your sins. If the truth of the matter is of what you believe that Christ has not been raised. Then what are you believing in this gospel for if he was not raised from the dead if you don't take upon that truth who is Christ then all what you believed has been worthless there's no point to it at this point you should just stop already is what Paul is saying you either believe the gospel in which it which the living word presents itself or you turn away from it there's no middle ground Lastly, number three, he says, what I saw is also falsifiable. First Corinthians 15, 5 through 11. And that he appeared to Cephas, then, the, then to the twelve, after he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James then to all apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also, for I am the least of the apostles, and not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me did not prove vain, but I labored even more than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God with me, whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. Basically, to put in a nice little bow, he says, Jesus Christ appeared to Cephas. He appeared to the twelve. He appeared to me, an untimely born. He says, you know what? He appeared to all these people. And if, it just need, if you just needed one more, he, he appeared to me also. So he's like, yeah, me too. For man is not without excuse, as we know it. As Romans 1 says, men know the truth. But because of their sin, because of their wickedness, they suppress it. And beloved, even though we are in Christ and there is no condemnation in Christ, Never forget that we all still suffer from indwelling sin. We all still have that residue. And that residue, even that residue, tries to blind you. It tries to suppress the truth that you found in Christ. But when you put on that belt of truth, nothing can strip it from you. 
unless you are willing to let it be stripped from you. I plead and implore that you all read and meditate on this word daily. That you read 1 Corinthians 15. You read the whole chapter and meditate on it because I only brought it to you verses 1 through 19. But the entire chapter, he goes deeper. The entire chapter. He basically says you, to the, the people of Corinth, you know what? You don't even know what y'all talking about because I'm about to beat you like a tied goat that's about to be fed to lions. Because the first of the matter is, if Christ wasn't raised, then all of your talking, all of your doing, all of your laboring is for naught. And if you don't believe me, you can believe the other twelve. You can believe the rest of the twelve, for I am part of that twelve. And if you don't believe them, then there are over five hundred witnesses. So, beloved, meditate on this. Just. Dive into it. Don't let the spirit of the age and worthless flesh creatures try to strip you of the truth and feed you a lie. And I give it to Apostle Simba to pray us out.